Six things you need to know about the alt-right, alt-left perspective. Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and I was just surfing the ye old internet and checking out social media, etc., and I have noticed a trend among typical mainstream leftist propagandists like Lindy West, shown here, her article, in which they are trying to find ways of saying that Trump and his cabinet are literally Nazis. Because, obviously, saying that worked so well to get Hillary Clinton elected. <laughs> it goes without saying that these spin doctors are desperate, and for good reason. When you create an entire career around peddling a censorship-happy, hypocritical, and eventually overwhelmingly unpopular narrative that costs your team an election, you'd obviously end up panicking once you lose the war you were so sure you would win. So I have expected nothing less than further accusations about patriarchy, white supremacy, and other such things from the likes of Anita Sarkeesian, Cat Block, and Lindy West. The only thing surprising is how broad of a stroke they are willing to paint people with, using... Such a misunderstood term as the alt-right. So considering I'm a non-right-wing person that at least vaguely understands what the alt-right actually is, I figure that I need to make a few things clear to left-leaning people who might be hearing about the label for the first time or who've heard of it but never quite knew what the label really meant. Because otherwise, they'll just hear that anybody even vaguely associated with anybody that somebody calls alt-right is literally a Nazi! Let's begin. The first thing you need to know about the alt-right is that nobody really knows exactly what it is. Scott Adams, the creator of Dilbert, said it the best when he referred to it on the Rubin Report as a miscellaneous grab bag of things other people don't like. You see, there's very few people that actually identify openly as alt-right. But people are very quick to call anybody with a Pepe meme as a profile photo alt-right. Ultimately, despite what anybody might tell you, alt-right is as vague as it sounds. It is a new alternative to traditional right-wing politics that stays within the right wing, technically. A lot of people would say that it is socially very liberal, despite all of the literally Hitler accusations being thrown around about Trump by people who honestly know basically nothing about the alt-right culture. The second thing to know about the alt-right is that Richard Spencer is not actually a very major player in it culturally, even though I think he claimed that he coined the phrase alt-right. And he does have a bit of a cult following. But seriously, who knows who coined such a phrase? It's not exactly a unique term. Plenty of people could have had the same idea at the same time. Regardless, Richard Spencer creeps me the hell out, and I imagine he creeps most people out, which is why you rarely heard about him up until leftist propaganda media realized that he is one of those wacky people that believes in white race preservation or purity or whatever. I don't really know. I've only watched him speak once or twice, and I didn't want to watch him again. He's kind of wacky. So now that they have a very specific scapegoat in terms of Richard Spencer, who I am fairly sure most conservatives I know don't even like, they try to say that everybody even vaguely associated with the label alt-right is a Nazi because it isn't a huge stretch to say Richard Spencer is a Nazi. And since he claims to have coined the phrase alt-right, leftist propaganda media has taken this narrative and ran with it, claiming that he founded the alt-right and therefore the alt-right is just code word for a Nazi. When really, that's kind of like saying that a certain heavy metal band founded heavy metal and that they are Satanists and then therefore every heavy metal band is Satanists. Ugh. The third thing to know about the alt-right is that Breitbart News, which is the actual flagship for the alt-right sociopolitical label, is really not as bad as you probably have heard. They employ Milo Yiannopoulos, who is gay, so the likelihood that they are legitimately homophobic is rather slim, and please spare me the self-hating gay man bullshit about him, because I've already made a video about that. More so, he was the only gay man who got into the mainstream that publicly challenged postmodern feminism, at least over the past couple of years. And I personally think that gay male feminists are the real self-haters, which I also get into in other videos. Regardless, people also say that Breitbart is anti-Semitic, which is just nonsense because they've employed numerous Jewish people like Ben Shapiro, who is orthodox and wears a yarmulke everywhere. Now... There is a legitimate argument to be made that Breitbart has some racist and sexist articles published on the site. 
But here's what you have to keep in mind. The late Andrew Breitbart's main slogan for his publication was that politics exists downstream from culture. That said, Breitbart is very deliberately edgy and provocative, and I think all they are really doing is providing a strong counter-narrative to what basically the entirety of leftist blogs like the Huffington Post, BuzzFeed, and Everyday Feminism tends to. These leftist blogs are very regularly racist against white people and sexist against men. Breitbart realized there was probably a giant pool of people who were sick of that narrative, mostly white men, and so they began tapping into that energy. So largely, they just played the game and they won. And all the people who are calling them bigots are generally bigots themselves if you really break it down. The only difference I am seeing is that I bet... Breitbart knows they are just playing a game, whereas a lot of leftist media, white man hating type people, actually really do hate white men. The fourth thing you need to know about the alt-right is that if you were to accept the broad label that people like Hillary Clinton have put upon it, it is extremely diverse. Obviously, Milo Yiannopoulos actually identifies as alt-right and is gay, so the Nazi label is a bit weird. I'm sure several people call YouTube personalities like transgender Blair White alt-right, but I don't think she identifies as alt-right. I'm not really sure. Similarly, I'm sure they call some black guy and that guy T alt-right, but again, I doubt they identify that way either. Really, it's an extremely vague label that has been carelessly thrown around. So don't get all satanic panic or Nazi panic in reference to it because it will just make you crazy. The fifth thing you need to know about the alt-right is that it will almost certainly be something different in a few years, as nebulous labels tend to shift in that way. I mean, seriously, anybody who remembers the 90s well can tell you that... What they called alternative music didn't exactly sound the same over the years. Same with indie rock or techno or whatever. It always changes. What is now alt-right might end up being mainstream in a few years. So before that happens, you should probably get the memo that they aren't actually Nazis and that very few people take the more potentially very racist ones like Richard Spencer all that seriously. Most of the people, like, you know, 98% of the people associated with alt-right label are not actually wackos, and they're not that bad. The sixth and final thing to know about the alt-right is that there is an alt-left, and it is also extremely vague. Myself and a few others, like Summons.Broadcast, are doing our best to define it, and it does have a few things in common with some people that fall under more of the alt-right banner, or at least are labeled that way by others. Again, both banners could be extremely broad. Nobody really knows what they are, and they will probably change. You can check out my video about the alt-left for a quick summary, but obviously we are not Nazis by any stretch of the imagination. Simply put, alt-left people think that identity politics has ended up not just dividing the left, but crippling it into a gurgling, dying abomination that lost this election to a reality television show star with zero political experience. Alt-left people care about every type of citizen, and we want to unite them for the common good. I hope you'll join us. Drop me a comment and stay tuned.